In this short video, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of components of movement analysis. That is the classes of movement and the phases that occur within each class. To begin, let's look at the classes of movement. There's generally been three classes of movement that have been identified. The first is a discrete task. With a discrete task, there is a definitive start and end as you go from, say, A to B. An example of this would be a vertical jump. Second, we have a cyclic task. A cyclic task, in comparison to a discrete task, has no distinct beginning and end. You have a movement cycle that repeats over and over again, and you can really start anywhere within the cycle. An example of this would be hopping or skipping rope. Finally, we have a serial task. A serial task will chain together two or more discrete tasks and a cyclic or a discrete task. An example of a serial task would be the triple jump in athletics. One thing I'm going to ask you to do in your breakout rooms is to give more examples of each class of movement. Next, we can look at the phases of movement. Phases of movement allow us to break down a particular movement and examine it more easily. For a discrete task, we can identify three generic phases. We have a preparatory phase, a propulsion phase, and a breaking phase. The preparation phase, as the name implies, gets the body in the proper position to generate as much energy as it can during the propulsion phase. The propulsion phase is where energy is being generated in order to complete the task. And then with the breaking phase, we would be absorbing any energy that's left in the body after the propulsion phase. As I mentioned previously, with cyclic tasks, a movement pattern is repeating itself over and over again, and we can really enter anywhere within the cycle. But let's start with the propulsion phase. As we said, with the propulsion phase, we are generating energy. Next, we are going to have a recovery phase. During the recovery phase, the body is repositioning itself in order to return back to the propulsion phase. If we look at my previous example of hopping or jumping rope, for example, we can say the propulsion phase is during the concentric portion of the movement where we're lifting ourselves up into the air, and then the recovery phase is where we're rebounding onto the ground. As I mentioned previously, with a serial task, we are going to chain together two or more discrete tasks, or a cyclic task and a discrete task. Let's take a look at an example where we are going to chain together two discrete tasks. As I mentioned previously, with a discrete task, we have a preparatory phase, a propulsion phase, and a breaking phase. If we have another discrete task, we'll also have another preparatory phase, propulsion phase, and breaking phase. If we end up linking those two tasks together, we'll see that the breaking phase of the first task is actually the preparatory phase for the second task. And when they are seamlessly put together, we can see that we have a preparatory phase, a propulsion phase, the breaking phase and the preparatory phase get morphed together before our second propulsion phase followed by our next breaking phase. So if we turn back to the triple jump in athletics, the landing of the first jump is a, the breaking phase of that first jump but it's also the preparatory phase for the second one, and so on. So there you have it. Those are the basics of movement analysis that I'd like you to know for this class. The classes of movement include having a discrete task in which we have a distinct beginning and end. We have a cyclic task which repeats itself over and over again. And we have a serial task which will chain together two or more discrete tasks or a cyclic task and a discrete task. Within a discrete task, we have three phases. A preparatory phase, which is getting the body ready for the propulsion phase, where we are going to be generating energy to complete the task. And then we follow that with a breaking phase, where we will absorb any energy left in the body after the propulsion phase. For cyclic task, we are going to alternate between a propulsion phase and a recovery phase. Once again, the propulsion phase, we're generating energy and that recovery phase is repositioning the body in order to re-enter the propulsion phase. And then finally, if we look at serial tasks, if we chain together two or more discrete tasks, 
we will see that the breaking phase of the first task is actually the preparatory phase for the second task, and so on.